This is Gary Atencio with CNTV, and today we're in Centennial, Colorado. We're at Walker Family Protection, brand new for 2012. They have been committed to protecting families financially while encouraging them to be successful and leave a legacy. I'm here with the president, David Walker. David, I appreciate you meeting with us today. Why don't we start off, first of all, um, you really come to the industry here with quite a bit of experience in coaching people through change. What got you involved in this line of work? It was interesting because I spent about 12 years on Wall Street. I was recruiting and training and developing people there, working for a number of big financial services companies. And what they called the industry was the securities industry, but I referred to it as the insecurities industry. And the reason why is simple. Uh, people need guidance. People aren't sure what they have. They don't know exactly uh, that they can trust the person who's advising them, and there's a whole lot of selling going on. And so. Uh, it was a germinal idea many, many years ago for me to be in a position to help people, to really zero in on what they needed and where they wanted to go. Wonderful. Obviously, with life comes risks. We would like to think that uh, tragedies and setbacks are for the other guy, but quite honestly, that type of thinking doesn't keep us safe. Absolutely. And it's one of the uh, key areas that I like to emphasize is the fact that what if? We look at, uh, as an example, the idea of an umbrella policy. I had a meeting with a couple on Saturday. They had a vague idea of what that meant, but they had never actually explored that in terms of what really a very modest investment could do to protect them in the event that they had a, a bad accident, which is an easy thing to do in Colorado on the ice and snow. Uh, and we talked a little bit about that, and they were just totally reassured that there's something they could do to make certain that if a big event occurred, they would be covered. Interesting. Let me ask you this. As, as we prosper more and more in our society, we attain more, really, there's more that we can actually lose. Exactly right. And when you are at fault, and let's face it, we all, at some point in our lives, if we drive, if we have an active lifestyle, we're going to make mistakes. Yeah. And so uh, if you're not prepared, and I talk to many people who first seek out my advice on getting minimal coverage, simply meeting the requirements of the state. Uh, but we talk a little bit about what's really at risk if, in fact, they do make a big mistake because uh, it could really ruin their life for a long time, uh, up to and including uh, garnishing their wages and, and the like, because uh, one out of six, roughly one out of six uh, judgments in the courts of Colorado is well over a million dollars, and most people don't have that kind of coverage. Wow. So we're talking basically, um, so like you say, it's an if on, on some of these big tragedies, but quite honestly, it's a when on just your basic setbacks that come around. As a, as a new couple starting out, an individual coming out of college, a lot of these safeguards to put in place are quite overwhelming. Mm -hmm. When should a person start putting these protection plans in place? Gary, you know, uh, as soon as possible. But one thing we try not to do is overwhelm people with too much detail. Again, just referring to that client or the two clients that I met with on Saturday, I had one piece of paper in front of them that outlined four, maybe four or five ideas that I thought was really germane to their situation. But I didn't even present that until we had been talking for about an hour. And I understood what they're doing, where they want to go. Uh, why is one of them dropping a very profitable, uh, engaging job to go back and earn a master's degree. What does he want to do with that? Uh, what is she planning to do with her teaching career? And how can I help them feel protected without being overwhelmed by lots of detail or, frankly, lots of, you know, heavy sales uh, yeah. hucksterism? So once you basically understand your client, what they're going for, you can really put that together for them. What about somebody who has a, a package in place already, mm -hmm. but they'd like to basically get it reviewed or maybe even compared? Exactly. A lot of people come to me and, uh, of course, I, as you know, I've been active in counseling people in a lot throughout Colorado, uh, executives to uh, administrative people and everywhere in between. And a lot of times I will talk with them and just say, have you gotten a second opinion? Uh, do you know how you stand in the marketplace? And by the way, most people aren't aware that if it's been two, three, four years since they've had a review or they've had a chance to sit down with a professional who took his time or her time to really review their circumstances, many things can change and they're not aware of it. Not only that, but you can probably have some insight from your experience that basically somebody else maybe couldn't have seen. Right. 
One of the things I always tried to do when I was advising people from a career standpoint is to do uh, some assessment work right up front to really understand kind of what made them tick, what made them unique, what made them successful, maybe where some of their weaknesses might be. We all have blind spots. Uh, some of us really love to get into the details. Others of us can't stand detail. We'd rather just kind of zip through and handle the basics and move on. And I try to zero in on what makes people tick and how, uh, as an example, couples, the dynamic between them? How do they relate to each other? Which of the two is really kind of the brains of the outfit in terms of right. analysis and which sees more of the big picture and how do they communicate that and how do I relate to their needs to see the big picture and the details? One of the things that really overwhelms people with insurance in general is the fact that um, there's a lot to it, but quite honestly we understand how important it is. I mean, this isn't something that basically we should kick the tires and look at the price tag. We really need to look at it further. What do you offer there? One of the things we try to do, Gary, is uh, we know that people are motivated by price. We know that to them insurance isn't that fascinating a subject. And, but what that points out, of course, is they really are somewhat ignorant or need to be educated is a more positive way of saying it about how insurance works, how it works for them, how it can work against them, and how many times if you're motivated by price and you're in a hurry just to get the cheapest policy you can to meet minimal requirements, that's really a bad motivator. It sometimes is appropriate. But many times there are other coverages and a discussion about those coverages is essential to really understand what can be provided. The assumption people make is it's, it's too expensive for me to do anything but minimums and that's not always the case. And actually what ends up being too expensive uh, in the long run, it can really, really be expensive. If you have a million dollar judgment against you and you have minimum coverages, as I said earlier, you may be working for many years to pay that off. And an accident can happen in a split second which can change your life it's just that simple wonderful give us kind of an overview here for the viewers what types of insurance that you do offer right well I'm affiliated with farmers I'm an independent agent but I do uh, work directly with farmers and, and the interesting thing about farmers is that um, they have a number of subsidiaries that really can cover just about everything so when Professor Burke does his TV commercials and you see the uh, you know the little space monkey float down and some of the other funny situations they bring up we really do offer just about everything in terms of uh, coverage we also have a financial service services entity which allows people to do retirement planning and to really prep for things like college and, and the like. So we have a wide array. Uh, what I like to do is start with the basics with people to be certain that their foundation is strong because if the foundation is strong it doesn't matter how beautiful your house is, it could easily fall. Absolutely. One of the things that um, interests me is the fact that you're able to take people when they're brand new, individuals young coming out, but now with your financial services, you're able to make sure that they have something at the end of the road for them, which is, uh, which is a great deal. One of the things I, I notice is you're a family man yourself, I am. so obviously you're able to tailor these packages, customize them for each client out there. That's true. I have four children, and uh, I have sort of a blended family, if you will. So uh, I've got kids that are in their uh, 20s and just about uh, 30. My daughter will turn 30 this summer. Plus, I have two little ones at home. Uh, there are some who have accused me of, uh, you know, losing my mind somewhere along the way between the two phases. But honestly, it's been a real joy. And, uh, you know, as you go through life, what you realize is every day seems to be more expensive than yesterday. Uh, when you look at what it cost for my older kids to go to college versus what it's going to cost for my younger kids to go to college, it, it really is mind-numbing. Yeah. And I have a friend as an example whose son was a terrific baseball player. He could have earned scholarships to play baseball at probably half a dozen pretty good uh, well-known universities, but he decided he wanted to go to a private Catholic institution where they don't offer any baseball scholarships. And he's paying a cool 48000 a year to send his son to the school of his choice. Luckily, my friend had a good plan, and that's what I try to do is help people prepare for reality. A perfect example of change happening rather quickly. Exactly right. And uh, in that case, Tom was a baseball coach. He had his son under his wing for 10, 12, 15 years playing ball all the way up. He was a very gifted player, but at a certain point, his priorities changed. My son uh, did nothing but think about soccer until he was about 20 years old when he taught himself to play guitar, decided not to play soccer his senior year in college even though he was on scholarship, and uh, within a year or two had decided to go to med school. And believe me, that's not cheap. One thing we can always count on is change. <laughs> Obviously, you, you have some packages put together for families, individuals, their homes. What about for businesses? Right. 
we have several subsidiaries, as I mentioned, that focus in on very much specialized business coverage. One of the things I try to do is talk to small businesses about what they've got and also where they're going. Uh, I have talked to companies that developed very quickly where they had a one or two man operation and all of a sudden they had very fast growth and they needed all kinds of help in terms of workers comp and, and the like. But uh, yes, I, I go out of my way to talk to small business people. In fact, this weekend I talked to a friend of mine who's actually uh, an expert in water treatment and water systems and is in the business of uh, counseling mostly municipalities on how they handle water. Uh, he also spent a very interesting couple of days inside of NORAD and uh, in Cheyenne Mountain down in Colorado Springs and uh, he discovered some really amazing uh, applications of his knowledge. But the bottom line was he needed some basic coverage, some liability coverage. It's not terribly expensive, but it's very important in case something goes wrong. Absolutely. As a professional risk manager, really there's kind of an art going on here. I mean, I see it as a balance between you having to be very compassionate, yet on the other hand, tenaciously focused to make sure that you provide the best for your client. That's right. This is hard work. I had an appreciation for that uh, when I spent time on Wall Street. I talked to many individual brokers and managers at that time learned how hard those people worked to build their business. This is not easy to do to start a business like this and build it from scratch, although it helps to have a powerful network and some good friends who are willing sure. to listen. And I might also add kind of throw uh, you know, a few tomatoes at me to make sure I know what I'm talking about. But uh, that's a, a very important part of what we do is to reach out, uh, to be consistent, not only to be compassionate and, and really listen carefully to what people, not only who they are and what they want, but kind of what goes into their thinking about money. But at the same time, we have to think in terms of the bottom line. The bottom line and reaching out. Let me ask you, how important is it uh, for you? I know as a family person, as well as with your wife, how important is giving back? It's essential. And my wife is the ultimate giver. You may have uh, heard about All-American Betsy, but uh, uh, we both have been involved in a number of different causes. Uh, we both actually were in Rotary at separate times. We didn't even know it. I'm a, I like to call myself a recovering Rotary Club president because <laughs> when you get involved in something like Rotary and you get committed, boy, all of a sudden that's your full-time avocation and your job kind of becomes a part-time uh, situation for a while because there's so many different ways to help people and so many needs out there. So, but we also, we look for ways, as I may have mentioned to you, my wife teaches Pilates as an example. We built a Pilates studio in our home. She and I help each other and support each other as far as our two businesses. We refer clients to each other. We are each developing our practice. We both know we don't know it all, but both businesses are growing and, and we can see that we're thriving by helping people and guiding them, in her case, to greater health and in my case, to greater financial health. So now with your years of experience, you're helping folks out there. What about who helped you? Any mentors out there? Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons I'm sitting here in this District 25 office with farmers. And not to give a commercial, but there's a gentleman here by the name of Shannon Holtman who's quite experienced. And yet uh, he has that combination of salesmanship and yet great compassion, a very caring person, someone I can go to with every question. I like to call him the heart of the operation here, but the brains of the operation is a lady who sits in that desk behind us there. Her name is Christina Clute. And every detail that you could possibly know about how to put together a plan, she knows. And I've already decided I don't want to know all those details. I want to be able to go to her and ask for help. Wonderful. Folks, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. You're going to see his website right there. On the website, obviously, you're going to see a lot of the services that are able to offer. You're going to see some of these companies that are basically backing these policies that have been around for years and are very successful. And uh, you're also going to be able to see possibly some testimonials there as well. Um, and if you don't, go to his other website, which is Dave the Rave Walker. You're going to find out what people have to say about this individual. He comes to the table with a lot of years of experience and basically uh, is there for you. This is Gary Atencio with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.